Hello and welcome back to my channel. My name is Victoria and today I'm going to be bringing you the books that I read in May and June. So normally I make these videos monthly, but I basically read nothing in May, or at least very little, so I decided to just combine them into two months this time because otherwise the video would have been like a minute long because I fail at life, so there you have it. That being said, let's discuss the books I read. <laughs> the first book that I read in May was A Court of Frost and Starlight by Sarah J Maas. This book is basically the Shrek the Halls of the Akatar series, a novella that bridges the old Akatar series with the upcoming three book series. A Court of Frost and Starlight reads as a kind of extended epilogue to Akawar and shows what the inner circle is up to, including their journeys of healing and hardship after the Earth upending war. I made a reading vlog for this as well as a live show chat with some other creators, so I will link that below and if you want to know more, my thoughts on this book, you can find out there. The second book I read was City of Fallen Angels by Cassandra Clare. Now, if you guys have been following my reading for the last few months, you'll know that I'm part of Emma Book's Shadowhunters Read Along, and so this was the next book that we had to read in publication order. This is the fourth book in the Mortal Instruments series by Cassandra Clare, which follows Clary Thray in her adventures in the New York shadow world. Finally able to be together after realizing the truth of their past, Jace and Clary should be happy. However, Jace is pulling away and a new killer seems to be on the loose, experimenting with dark magic in a way that feels just a little too close to home. The Shadowhunters must solve this new mystery, all the while battling their excessive teen angst. This is definitely not my favorite in the series. It's actually probably my least favorite. It feels repetitive and a little bit boring, and then nothing really happens until the end of the book, but it is a good kind of introduction to the new problem that Cassandra Clare introduces in the second half of the series, so obviously it's necessary to read for the rest of the series, and it does have an amazing cliffhanger which sets up the rest of the series very well. The third book that I read is War Story by Victoria Aveyard. The final book in the Red Queen series, Warstorm is the epic conclusion to Mare Barrow's revolution against the silver-blooded aristocracy. I won't say more due to spoilers, but this book was a very satisfying conclusion to the series for me. I adored it. I know some people didn't, but personally I thought it was excellent. I did make a book talk about this, so I will link that below if you want to know more of my thoughts. And the fourth book that I read was Clockwork Prince by Cassandra Clare. Again, this is part of the read-along. We are reading the books in publication order, and so that's why we went City of Fallen Angels to Clockwork Prince rather than continuing with the Mortal Instruments series. This is the second book in the Infernal Devices series by Cassandra Clare, which follows Tessa Gray, a shape-shifting downworlder in 19th century London. With the help of Shadowhunters Will and Jem, Tessa struggles to find out the secrets of her past, all the while battling a heart divided in two between them and a mysterious figure known as the Magister who continues to hunt her. I'm sure most of you have heard of this or read them by now. I really like this series. The first time that I read them, actually, I wasn't a huge fan, but this is my second time now and I'm actually really enjoying it, almost maybe more than the Mortal Instruments, which is very weird because I used to be 100% in favor of the Mortal Instruments. Not that they need to be at war with each other, but if I had to pick a series, I would have said the Mortal Instruments, but now I'm actually leaning in favor of this. The first one I didn't enjoy as much, but the second one I thought was very much improved, and, and Team Gem. That's all I'm gonna say. All you Wessa shippers can get out. And the fifth book that I read in May and June was, was Caraval by Stephanie Garber. Longing to escape the controlling hand of their abusive father, sisters, Scarlet and Tella flee to the mysterious Island of Dreams and its famous game Caraval with the help of rogue sailor Julian. Yet as soon as they arrive, Tella is kidnapped and it soon becomes apparent that this year's game is a treasure hunt to get her back. With winning the only chance to save her sister, Scarlet is forced to play the game despite its reputation for danger and illusion. Struggling to find reality in a world designed to trick her, Scarlet and Julian must follow the clues before Tella and others are killed. This book was getting really mixed reviews online, so I was kind of hesitant to read it, but I also thought it looked really good. It really seemed like my cup of tea, so I dove right in. And I have to say, I loved the story and the world. I thought that that was really well done, but the romance was just a little painful for me. Like, <laughs> it's very insta-lovey. They fall in love in a handful of days, and it's basically entirely based on appearance alone. I mean, I'm sorry, that's really harsh, but like, they don't even know each other. They're just both like, you're the most beautiful human I've ever met. I must love you. <laughs> I'm like, mm, I don't know. <laughs> and also, the ending was really anticlimactic, so yeah, I'm sorry. I did, I think I gave this a 4 maybe on Goodreads. It's kind of more of a 3.5 for me. Like I said, the story was so good and, and the world, I could not put it down. Like I think I read this basically overnight. Like I meant to read a few chapters before bed and then just couldn't stop reading because I wanted to know what happened next. So it's definitely good from that perspective. It just wasn't great because I did find the romance like slightly gag worthy. And the next book that I read in May and June was Daughter of Smoke and Bone by Lainey Taylor. I read 
started this book because a lot of you have been recommending it to me and begging me to make songs about it. And so I'm really sorry to tell you that I hated it. Don't judge me. <laughs> if you haven't heard of this book, this book follows Karu, an irregular girl in a regular world who is raised by a collection of strange but friendly monsters in the streets of Prague. When this adopted family disappears, Karu suddenly finds herself in the middle of an otherworldly war. Seeking to discover the fate of her loved ones, Karu uncovers the secrets of her past while fighting her growing feelings for enemy soldier Akiva. So the one thing I will say about this is again, I love the world. It felt very original and the writing was amazing. But like Caraval, the romance <laughs> just kind of killed this for me. Like, I am so tired of reading about two ridiculously beautiful people that just see each other and suddenly, like, are obsessed and can't keep away. Like, it just doesn't do it for me, okay? That's not love, it's lust. And in this book, this is a spoiler, so plug your ears or fast forward the video if you don't want to hear this, but they try to play it off as both of them having known each other in a past life. So the reason that they're obsessed with each other now in like two days or even less is because they did know each other and their souls like recognize each other. But then when you get the flashbacks to how they fell in love in the other life, it's also in like a day and they don't even know each other. It's just like, it's, ugh. Anyway, I'm not gonna get into it because it's just irritating to me. And this had some redeeming qualities, like I said. It was very well written, the world is beautiful, but that just, I just couldn't get on board with that. Like, the first half is plot, and then the second half is just these two people being like, I don't know why I'm obsessed with you, but I am. Oh, that's why I'm obsessed with you, and I still am. Mm. I just don't buy it, I'm sorry. It's just lust, it's, it's not love. If you haven't been able to tell, I personally don't believe in love at first sight, so that's why this is not my cup of tea. If you're more romantic than me, and you do believe in that kind of stuff, then you will probably love this, but I just tend to be more rational and I just, I don't, I don't like it. <laughs> Along the lines of this romance, it has one of my least favorite tropes of all time, which is the supernatural being who's obsessed with this mortal girl for no reason. I mean, this one's not as bad because again, they did know each other in a different life, but at the same time, it's like perfect, immortal, powerful being and there's this like human girl and for some reason, I don't know why, but she's just like the thing I've been waiting for all this time and now I'm going to like completely set aside everything that I ever believed in for this human girl that I've known for a day because, wait for it, she's hot, but also different and not like other girls. So for those of you that love this series, I'm not saying this to offend you. I can see why you would love it. I think it is perhaps for someone more emotional and romantic because there's a lot of good stuff in there. And so please like it, please read it, but I will not be writing a song about it and I will not be continuing with the series. Sorry! And finally, the last book that I read in May slash June was Princess Academy by Shannon Hale. Now, this is a book that I read as a small child and just loved so much. And so I thought that I just wanted to go back to that childhood self and like speed read through a really easy, cute childhood tale. And it was just as satisfying and just as cute now as it has been over the last like 15 years of my life that I've known about it. <laughs> this book follows Mary, a 14 year old girl from the tiny territory of Mount Eskel. When the kingdom's priests announce that Mount Eskel will be the home of the the Crown Prince's future bride. A princess academy is set up to educate the mountain girls of Eskel in the manners of court. Too small to work in the mines, the usual occupation of a mountain citizen, Miri is desperate to prove herself. But as much as the idea of marrying the Crown Prince calls to her, she can't forget the smile of her childhood best friend Peter. Yet when an unexpected danger comes to Mount Eskel and the princess academy, Miri soon realizes the path to heroism comes in more than one form. Like I said, this is just so cute, so sweet. There's nothing bad about it, it's just like delightfully innocent and adorable. And so if you want a cute little fairy tale-esque read, I really recommend this. It's best suited for people ages about 10 to 15, but obviously I still enjoy it as an adult and I think if you're older than that, you will too because it's just so cute and so sweet. <laughs> so those are all the books I read in May slash June. I hope you enjoyed this video. Thank you so much for watching. Please let me know in the comments below if you have any suggestions for other books that I should read and also let me know what you guys are reading and what you thought of the books that I read if you've also read them. I love you so so much and I will see you in the next video. Bye!